Hello everyone, and welcome back to a rather small Dying Light 2 update video. For those who have not heard or have been losing their minds in anticipation, we finally have an announcement for the second anniversary, but it is a bit underwhelming, optimistic, and hopeful. Before we start, if you enjoy what you hear and see, liking and subscribing really does help a lot as I try to give you all the best of the Dying Light 2 news, information, theories, and discussion. Techland has finally made a post about the second anniversary, considering the fourth was on a Sunday, and I don't know any game studio that is really tweeting or updating their game on a Sunday, unless there is a severe issue that is needs to be pushed out like a hotfix. But this year is going to be a bit different as first we're going to be getting the Year of the Dragon event starting from February 8th through the 19th, then which seems to be a one of a possibly two-parter, which of course the actual big event will come into the second part of the month, which also confirms the not-so-subtle secret logo they made, what looks to be a modern SMG. I've seen some people say it's ripped straight from Dying Light 1, but I personally do not see the resemblance, so let me know in the comments below what you think it is. Also, on the 8th, there will be a Dying Light 2 Safe Zone stream on Twitch, which will talk more about the event, showcase creations, and hopefully show something off on what's coming in the future, considering we got a few breadcrumbs last year about DLC 2. Now, I know a lot of you guys are very disappointed to learn that we will be getting an event first, then the update, but personally, I'm not too surprised about this news, but I am also staying optimistic, considering one of the biggest features that will be coming to the game is not guns, it's not the tower raid, but actually, it's the official community mods. Dying 1 mod tools were amazing, and to see what people have created with them truly blew my mind. So for them to learn what made those tools great and to expand on them would take a lot longer than the extra month given since January really didn't have any big updates besides hot fixes for Xbox One, which I have been told is making players games run actually better and fix certain crashes, but also seen others state that they still encounter crashes regardless. So with that, make sure to email Techland about your issue and explain it as thorough as you can. Back onto the mod tools. If the tools are going to expand off of what Dying Light 1 tools were, then we're in for a huge treat. Maybe something like animation editing, so you can make your own unique animations. A world editor where you couldn't just remake the old E3 Central loop, but you can also create your own unique buildings and versatile experience to fit your own playstyle. Yes, it does suck that we would have to wait a bit longer, but considering what is left on the roadmap, we are in for a very big treat this year. Which I am hoping for future updates, they are given even more time, considering the timeline used to be monthly updates, which would occur to have some small batches of quality of life changes and a batch of bug fixes, but it would only bring even more issues. Then, we got updates every two months, which I'd say was pretty good handful of requested features and bigger fixes, making the game more stable. So with this huge anniversary update, I am hoping maybe they get even three months of time, considering how long it takes to investigate bugs, add new features, on top of adding features the community wants the most. But what do you guys think? Should the developers earn another month of polishing and general development after the big update? How do you feel about the anniversary delay? Will you attend the Safe Zone Twitch stream? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and as always, good night and good luck.